I've been fascinated with putting curve on my shots since growing up. I watched video after video of the F2 putting ridiculous amounts of swerve on their shots. After years of mastering curling on my own shots and crosses, I'm ready to teach you what I've learned and how to do it yourself. Welcome back to the channel. Let's start from the beginning. To get curve on your shots or crosses, you need to take your first touch perpendicular from your target. So for example, if I want to shoot on the goal ahead of me, I'm going to take my touch wide so that way I can curl it. Likewise, if you want curl on your crosses, your touch should be down the line and slightly inside to set you up for curling the ball. And I'll explain exactly why here shortly. Another really important detail is your standing foot. If you've seen my videos on shooting with power and long balls, you may remember that I say to point your foot in the direction you want the ball to travel. For curling the ball though, you want your foot to be pointed wide of your intended target. This is because the ball will travel in that direction briefly, but the curve of your shot or cross is going to bring it back towards the target. If you have your standing foot pointed at the corner of the goal, the curl of your shot will bring it back to the goalkeeper's hands. So make sure your foot is pointing well wide of the goal, that way the ball goes in that direction before your curl and whip puts it into the side panel. As for crosses, you'll want your foot to point like you're about to kick it out for a goal kick, letting the crosses curl bring the ball back into the box into the dangerous area. Now this detail is much more minor and comes naturally to most players. But when you're curling the ball, you need to lean to the opposite side the ball is traveling. So if you're hitting it with your right foot, you need to lean left. This lean causes your hips to be farther away from the ball, making it easier to hit lower on the ball and get height on your shot. It is also responsible for the whip or shape of the curled shot because it causes your leg not to go through the ball straight. Here's the difference between a straight power shot and a curled shot. This side lean causes my foot to swing around the ball, commonly referred to as wrapping my foot around it. It's no coincidence that the flight of my ball follows a similar path as my leg. And part of this lean is having your arm up too. If you're right footed, when you strike the ball, your force is going through your right side, making you want to lean to that direction. Putting your opposite arm up helps you lean to the side you want when hitting curlers. And this is the same for striking dangerous crosses too. Now there's two different ways to strike the ball which can affect the amount of curve on your strikes. And this is dependent on two things. Firstly, I like to have dip on my curled shots. So most of the time, when I strike the ball, I swing my foot up through the ball with a short follow through, creating the dip that is seen in these strikes. However, this means that most of my shots go bottom corner rather than in the top corner. If you want to hit these glory strikes, you want to strike cleanly straight through the ball. If you come up on the ball as you shoot, you'll put the dip into the shot. But there's one other key detail, and that's right here that's shown in the thumbnail. As you can see here on my dip shots, my toe is up some, but it is pretty level with the turf. To get more side spin on the ball, point your toe up higher. This reduced the amount of dip on my curlers. This is important for when you're crossing the ball since if your crosses have too much dip on them, they won't beat the first defender. That being said, just be careful when you're going for the glory shots because you're more likely to lose that ball when you sky it. Another reason you might be skying your shots is because of where you're making contact with the ball. When hitting curlers, you wanna hit just below the middle of the ball. If you hit too high up on the ball, it's gonna be a low bouncy shot. But hitting too low on the ball is going to make the ball go high and possibly even put backspin on the ball, which is not what you want for these shots. Hitting lower on the ball makes it harder to get the curve on the ball too. This right here is the sweet spot for curlers. But it isn't just about where you strike the ball. It's also about where you make contact with your foot. You want to strike the ball right here using the inside of your foot right by the knuckle of your big toe. Like I said earlier, when you do this, you want your toe up and you want to have your ankle locked. But what exactly does it mean to have your ankle locked? When your ankle is locked, 
your foot won't move around as much. It's stiff. Ordinarily, when your ankle isn't locked, your foot moves around and rotates more freely. To keep your ankle locked for this shot, you need to focus on keeping your toe up all the way through the shot and that will keep your ankle engaged. Notice how my toe stays up even in my follow through after taking the shot. Having your toe up and ankle locked will help make your curve more consistent, which is important for having accuracy on your shots and crosses. Lastly, I wanna reiterate the importance of having the swinging motion of your leg I mentioned earlier. This gives the shot or cross the curved shape. You'll never get the crazy curve on the ball you want without this critical piece. It will take lots of practice to master, but you'll get it down with time. Now, there's four other ways to shoot that you need to know to be a more dangerous attacker. Watch this video here, where I walk you through how to do each of them. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and I'll see you next time. Peace.